I swear this is not going to be a cooking video. It's first thing in the morning. I've literally just stuck the wash on. I've made myself a cup of coffee and I thought, you know what? I'm going to set all my filming gear up down here and uh, I'll uh, just get straight into making a video. Now, the other day I was chatting with someone about the, uh, the typical anxiety symptoms that men get when they're talking to women. And uh, he wondered if there were any that uh, potentially he'd never really thought of or maybe ones that he hadn't experienced himself. And I thought, you know what? I'll put together a video of all of the symptoms that I've seen and uh, heard and even experienced myself over the years and uh, see if other people can relate to them too. So in this video, I am listing nine anxiety symptoms that I have certainly seen and experienced. And I would be very curious to hear in the comments below if you've experienced any of these as well as maybe just maybe if there are any that I have missed out. Now I'm pretty confident I'm gonna be sharing with you everything that I can recall that I have seen and heard. So, um, but I would be very curious to hear if there are any that maybe you've experienced that perhaps maybe I've just never seen. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So symptom number one, we'll start with the really obvious one to begin with, and that is gonna be your increased heart rate. So as the fight or flight response kicks in in the body, it causes your heart to pump faster and also pump adrenaline through it. Now I obviously this is not the ideal circumstance that a guy wants to have, especially if he's talking to someone that he likes. When you're standing there, your heart starts racing and suddenly you start getting all energetic when rather you want to keep your cool, which then tends to lead onto the second symptom, which that people get very erratic and fidgety. You just start moving around, you can't keep still. And in fact, the more that you end up thinking about trying to keep still, the harder it literally becomes. So talk about creating this like self-hypnotic trance of uh, trying to talk yourself out of an issue and actually becoming even more aware of the issue that you worsen it and, uh, the girl just thinks that maybe you've got like ants in your pants or you're just standing there like an absolute lunatic. <sighs> Gotta make a good coffee. Symptom number three would be irregular breathing habits. So this tends to be the one that really catches a lot of men off guard. I've seen it countless times when they've gone into uh, a cold approach situation and because they just can't quite catch their breath, they find it very difficult to actually get any words out or they find that their uh, their vocal tonality starts going up and it starts going down as they just can't control the rhythm of their voice. Number four, this is kind of a, a bit of a weird one that I don't think many men have experienced, but I have certainly come across many circumstances with it, is that they experience lockjaw. So this is where really your kind of jaw sort of like freezes still and you just can't move it. So where the fight or flight response uh, kicks in and rather than perhaps maybe you're getting a, an erratic behavior, it can have the opposite effect and instead you end up standing there freezing. And what usually happens is, is that jaw just locks into place and I have certainly come across guys where afterwards they've just said I just couldn't speak my uh my it was like as if my mouth was just glued shut or it was just frozen solid and still so uh yeah it's a bit of a strange one but yeah it, it doesn't seem to be more common than people think so number five is brain fog. And this is where you're just unable to think clearly and recall anything in your brain. So this is usually a situation, again, with the fight or flight, but where cortisol is also released in the body. And when it gets into those most important parts of your brain where you really need to be thinking clearly, instead, it just seems to uh, block up those synapses and prevents you from actually thinking clearly. So this is usually where then you've got a guy who will be chatting to a girl and he just has no idea what to say. He, he knows how to have a conversation, but he just can't think of the words that he wants to express. And instead he just sort of stands there uh, bumbling like an idiot. And he's like, like uh, uh, what, do, what can I say? What, 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 what question or response can I give? And he is just lost. So number six is awkward laughter and smiles. Now, I don't know if maybe you've been in a situation where you've been chatting to someone and you've just tried to almost agree with everything that they've said or to really show that you're interested in them. You've maybe uh, kind of laughed at things that weren't really funny at all. Um, so this tends to be something that also happens, I think more for the, uh, 
the, the guys who really do lack confidence and they are kind of insecure in themselves, that they just sort of feel that to kind of fill in that awkward silence, kind of laugh or smile or say something really weird. God, I needed that this morning. Number seven of an anxiety symptom is the struggle to hold eye contact. So it is said that holding eye contact with someone is like peering into their soul and allowing them to peer into yours. And uh, there is actually some truth in that because you can really sort of feel a very deep and sensual and intimate connection with another person. And if you are certainly nervous about being around uh, someone and you just can't learn to hold your eye contact, get used to creating that tension, then there tends to be a lot more fractionating uh, takes place. And, uh, and what do I mean by fractionating? Well, that's usually where after you've held eye contact, you have to look away. Now, usually if you're, uh, especially in London, um, if you're looking uh, around on the underground, as soon as someone inadvertently locks eye contact with you, you just have to break it. You have to look away because uh, you don't want to create any kind of tension there, especially in uh, the awkward uh, place of the underground. Number eight is closed body language. And this is where men do the complete opposite to the guys who will stand there and fidget. Instead, because they just don't know where to actually put their hands or not to play around with things, not to make it sound dodgy or weird, but instead they start closing their arms and um, they try and you know give a very defensive pose because for them it can almost feel like they are being attacked, which sounds absolutely ridiculous out loud, but that tends to be just the body's reaction to a situation that they just don't know how to handle. And lastly, number nine is that men's vocal tonality go up. So when they get really nervous, they start talking as if they're like talking at the top of their mouth. And it's just very difficult to, you know, be taken more seriously if you're just talking at a much higher level. Whereas if you're able to just sort of bring that back down, well, that felt, that felt really strange that, uh, but if you're able to then bring that back down and just have a much more uh, authoritative <laughs> uh, sort of vocal tonality, then at least then you sound a lot more dominant and a lot more serious uh, when, uh, when you're talking to someone, especially if you're thinking about asking them out. But it can be very difficult when you're talking up really high and yeah, you just sound really weird and, uh, and, you know, and it's hard then for people to take you seriously. But worst of all, when you're getting to that point when you're going to be sexual with a woman, she's going to be just laughing in your face. So there you have it. Those are the nine symptoms that I have certainly seen and heard of over the, uh, the last 15 years. And I would be, again, very curious to hear if any of these are ones that you've inadvertently or unfortunately experienced, as well as maybe if there are others that I have missed out. Now, these were in no particular order at all, uh, although it would be absolutely hilarious if someone does comment below this video to say, you know what? those happened to me in that chronological order, then I would certainly be impressed. And uh, I will uh, just have to make sure that I buy a lottery ticket as the uh, my next course of action. But if you can though, please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, I really do hope that you enjoyed this video. And again, I wanna hear if uh, any of these have happened to you and what did you do about that experience? And also, are there any that I have missed out? And most importantly, the more subscribers that I can get on this channel, then the more guys I can reach for, uh, for help with my coaching, as well as just sharing expertise on how to overcome anxiety. Now, this video was uh, just really just pointing out, I think some of the more obvious facts but certainly in content that I wanna be putting out in future is gonna overcome and help you with all of these different anxiety symptoms and traits. So just bear that in mind when you, uh, you do like and subscribe and comment on this video. But thank you very much for watching and until the next video, try and keep your anxiety at bay.